CEO Francis Dufay joins me now from Casablanca, Morocco. So great to have you on the show. I mean, we've been talking about currency devaluations, whether we're seeing it in Cairo, where Richard Quest uh, is broadcasting from tonight, or whether we're seeing it in Nigeria. We're actually seeing so much pressure on African currencies. Would you say? that the foreign exchange risk that you're facing in Africa is the pro biggest problem you have right now. Hi, Lenny. Thanks for having me on the show. It's a pleasure being here again. Um, I mean, I'm not, I don't know if it's the biggest, but it's part of a macro environment that is extremely challenging at the moment. We had never, I mean, we have not seen that for a very, very long time. Um, and um, well, it's all adding up. Um, currency trouble, uh, having a lot of impact on supply, uh, having impact potentially on political stability. So it makes the environment a bit tougher for everyone, but it also pushes us uh, to challenge the business model and to, I mean, force the right decisions at some point. So it's a very fair challenge. It will show very fast which companies are strong and which ones are not. Um, and we, we brace for impact and we, we get ready for better times. Yeah, look, it's also very unpredictable. Um, covering Africa for most part of my career, I can tell you that I see big companies really buckling on what they experience on the currency front, but you've got things that are in your control. You've you know, consolidated. Um, we've seen job cuts, for example. You've got a new strategy in place. Um, how does that counter what you're experiencing in the macroeconomic environment? I think it's important for everyone in emerging markets and especially for us across Africa to minimize risk at the moment. So minimizing risk for us means, of course, being much more efficient in operations, cutting a lot of fixed costs. So we've done, I mean, we've removed nearly a third of our staff costs in the, in the past six months um, and making sure that we secure the basics. Um, so we will not go for extravagant spend in marketing, for example, that's not the mindset at not the time anymore for that will go for really the, the basics of value creation for consumers. Consumers are still here, yeah. there's still demand, um, but it just needs to be addressed in a much more pragmatic way. Yeah, exactly. And look, and how much they're able to spend and what they're, they're after, what products they need. Look, on the logistics front, you also face enormous challenges, whether it's road infrastructure, you know, there's a plethora of issues as well. Um, when you first listed, you know, you were touted as the Amazon of Africa. Do you still believe that you, you can live up to that expectation? Well, it's, um, it's been um, a very high expectation. I mean, if you look in detail, what we're doing is also very different from what Amazon is doing. We've, we've adapted very much to the environment uh, in Africa. Uh, a lot of, I mean, from the outside, we're doing e-commerce. But we're dealing with very different sellers. With, we're dealing with very different logistics. Um, our operations are actually quite different. We're, we're really adapted to the African environment. Um, so um, in a way, our business model is very different from Amazon. But yeah. the basics are the same. Um, yeah. one, one of the most vibrant parts of the continent is the informal sector, right? It's those traders. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's Absolutely. a big conversation on how to formalize the traders, how to offer them more products to get to more consumers. You're looking at expanding f further and you're looking at, at the rural um, side of things because the, you can monetize that if you think about that in, in a pragmatic way. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm going to tell you a story. A few years back uh, in Ivory Coast, I was talking to people in a, in a remote pickup stations and we had customers who had been driving hundreds of kilometers to get to that pickup station so they could buy home appliance. Yeah. I mean, seen from Europe or from the US, it's crazy, right? I mean, because supply is abundant and you yeah. get everything you need nearby. But what we're solving for uh, across the African continent is supply for our consumers. It's a daily struggle for consumers to get the right products. Um, so we need to bring our vendors, our best supply, to smaller cities, to more remote areas where we're adding actually a lot of value. And uh, creating that value, we can make a living yeah. for, for ourselves as well. Look, I'll be honest with you. When I look at Jumia, I, I think that you are, in a way, um, a barometer, a gauge of you know how healthy the African ma market is and just the prospects, um, and and the excitement and the opportunities that lie ahead. But you're dealing with challenges that I've seen so many times before with companies trying to break new ground. Do you feel confident um, that things are going to yeah. turn around? That you, that you can, yeah, that, that you can get to where you want to be. 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, we're going to prove, and we're starting to see the early, the early results, we're going to prove that e-commerce in Africa doesn't have to be expensive, can be extremely lean, extremely efficient, doesn't need a lot of marketing, and can create a lot of value for consumers, for vendors, and for ourselves, and can be a very viable business. It's a whole different approach that we, we explained a couple of months back. Um, you see the first early results, at least in cost cutting, uh, we're rebuilding the basics, yeah. um, but this business solves real problems for customers across the countries, um, and even in troubled situations. So you mentioned in Nigeria, but I mean you mentioned you, you you saw the example of Egypt earlier in the show. Even in tough situations where infrastructure yeah. is poor, where there is devaluation, there is still demand, and it's still our job to bridge the gap between <laughs> between supply and demand and bring the right products to consumers. And we see that there is business for us even in tough yeah. situations. So I'm not too worried about that. Fantastic. Well, Francis Dufay, I wish you all the best. Thank you so very much. And that's it for me, Eleni John.